Cheers is filmed before a live studio audience. And your break was over ten minutes ago. Oh, Carla, please. I have to come up with a topic for my psychology paper by tonight. I'm at a complete loss. Of course, I could turn out your run-of-the-mill essay on sadomasochism, bestiality, bondage, and discipline. But I'm looking for something with a little pizzazz. Hello, everybody. Oh, Sam. Would you please see if you could light a fire under the stick? She's been goofing off for an hour. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's got to write some paper about sex, and she can't think of anything to write about. You're kidding me. She studied for a whole year at Sammy State. Okay. Why don't we jump to your relationships outside the family? Yeah. At what age did you have your first sexual encounter? Oh, all right, that's more like it. Okay. Um... <laughs> Trevor, a case study. Who, who's Trevor? That's you. You're not going to use my name? Of course not. So I do all the work and this Trevor guy gets the credit? Sam, this is not your resume. In a psychological treatise, real names are never used. Yeah, but at least I should be able to choose my own name. I mean, how about Duke? <laughs> This is my paper, and I like Trevor. All right, all right. Well, let's see, where were you? I uh, want to know about my first time, right? Yes. How old were you? Well, boy, I'm not sure. Uh, I know I couldn't get to her house until the crossing guard showed up. <laughs> wow, first time is kind of hard to remember. What about your first time? I'm the scientist, Sam. My first time has nothing to do with this. But just to lay the subject to rest, it was the summer of my 19th year. He was a young man in uniform. It was a brief encounter. He left my arms and went to his doom. Oh, no, he was killed, huh? No, no, he went off to boot camp and came back with the most god-awful haircut I'd ever seen. <laughs> Now, may we get back to you and limit your responses to attitudes. Please leave out the gory details. Now, what about your second encounter? Well, that would be the crossing guard. <laughs> Didn't read this, did you? Didn't have to. I lived it. Sit down, please. Trevor is the image of the arrested adolescent. Entirely self-oriented. Still intimidated by the women around him and attempting to prove himself superior to them. Through sexual conquest, he can, for a time, quell his constant fears of inferiority and failure. Indeed, the idea of a non-sexual relationship is completely foreign to him. As the years pass and his physical attractiveness diminishes, he'll be doomed to a life of loneliness and despair, unable to give or receive love. Is this really how you feel about me? This is my clinical view of you. As a woman, I might have felt something different than I feel as an academician. Makes my life seem so cheap and pathetic. Sam, you're reading things into this. Like here, where it says his life is cheap and pathetic? <laughs> at once is the only two entities of any discernible intellect in this place that is our duty to set an example for the others. You're only saying that because you know I'm smarter than you are. <laughs> well, this from a man who mispronounced remoulade at a dinner party. Diane, I'm fed up with the remoulade incident. Yes, me too. You have totally over... Hey, 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 would you two cut it out? You're drowning out a perfectly good tire commercial. <laughs> So, uh, Woody, what's this uh, system you got up your sleeve there? Yeah, Woody. Well, I don't actually have one. I just kind of look at the picks and one team jumps out at me. Uh, he's uh, got it down to a science. Uh, really? <laughs> Imagine how much you would have made if you parlayed some of those bets. Ooh. Ooh. What's that mean? Well, that's when you uh, bet a series of games with a bookie. I mean, you got to win them all, so the odds are pretty long. Well, uh, do you guys know a real bookie? I got a friend who's got a friend who's got a friend. And he's a bookie? No, but his friend is. <laughs> I never placed Woody's bet. Oh, my 
God. Sam, for the first time in your life, you had the right intentions, and it still blew up in your face. Oh. <laughs> it was such a stupid bet. I, I was just trying to protect him. What am I going to do? I mean, I don't, I don't have $10,000. Oh, dear. Well, we know that Woody actually did pick the winning teams. Yeah, so? So, why don't you go to the bookie, bookie, bookie. and tell him that you honestly intended to wager on the winning teams? <laughs> and see if he won't give you the money. It's a good idea. While I'm at it, why don't I just tell him that I meant to bet on all the winning teams since 1975? Can you do that? Please. Hi, Sam. I'm back. Hey, get in here. So, what you think, huh? hundred bucks? That's not too bad, is it? Oh, yes. The station asked me to convey their appreciation to you for helping them out. Oh, well, I was glad to. I mean, that's my favorite station. It is? Yeah, yeah. I especially like those uh, two guys that talk about the day's events. McNeil there. Uh, no, no, uh, Bert and Ernie. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, unless maybe that's their last name. So thank you. I'll leave it up there until it sells or ends up on Mr. Bobo's table. Yeah, there you go, that's a story. Uh, D Diane? Can I, uh, can I? Yes, Sam. I'm sorry, whose table? <laughs> Mr. Bobo's table. What's, what's that? That's where things are put when they aren't sold. Well, then, then what happened? You don't want to know. Yes, I do. Tell me. In the last 10 minutes of the telethon, a chimpanzee, Mr. Bobo, <laughs> draws viewers' names out of a coconut and they give the things away. You mean that egghead station of yours let some dumb animal choose who gets the prizes? That dumb animal, as you called him, was part of a language experiment at Cornell University. He has a vocabulary of 500 words. Fi oh, come on. I, I find that completely... Uh... I'd better hurry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, dubious! Yeah, dubious. Take a look at me. Do I look upset? Do I look angry? Then why'd you drag me in here? Well, because I know that you were just dying to call me a big dope. No, uh -uh, not me. Yeah. I thought I'd give you a chance to do it privately. I see what you're doing. What? You want an excuse to blow up and let it all out so you'll feel better. And you want me to provide the excuse. Well, I'm not falling for that. I am not going to blow up. I just think that we're not going to be able to lay this thing to rest until you call me a big dope. It's what's in your mind, so why don't you just say it? Get it over with, and we'll go on with our lives. No. Well, I really wish you would. I think it would be good for me to hear. Well, maybe you should... I knew it! I knew it! I knew you couldn't get your big fat mouth shut! Oh, God, you think you know everything, don't you? In your entire life, you've never said, I don't know, or I think this, or in my humble opinion. Oh, no, you always just say this, and you just say that, this, that, this, that. You know, you're nuts. You are crazy. And in your twisted little mind, you probably think you're going to make me crazy, just like you made Fraser crazy, just like you make everybody crazy. But you're not going to make me crazy. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why you're not going to make me crazy. Are you listening? Here it comes. I don't know. And I'll tell you something else. You don't know either. Nobody knows why you're not going to make me crazy. So stick that in your hat and smoke it. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs>